<laughs> I said, how does it feel to be a St. Louis Blue? Oh, it's great. I mean, um, to be honest, it, it was kind of not expected, but um, as the day went on, it just seemed, you know, more and more like a, a perfect fit. And, um, you know, as going through, you know, some of the, the things that were available, um, you know, with the roster that the, the Blues have in place and the core group, um, it just seemed like a match made in heaven. So it feels great. I'm very excited to get going. Were you surprised when this came along? I mean, looking at the roster they had? Yeah, I was, I was su surprised for sure. I mean, you know, we talked all along that in this process during it, there would be a team that uh, comes out of left field and, and surprises you and um, you might have to take a, a longer look at. So um, that's what happened. And, uh, you know, I had a good talk with Doug and then, uh, a great talk with the coach and um, you know we, we just looked at the roster and uh, we really sat down and, and analyzed what we wanted and, and the opportunity to win year in year out was something we just couldn't pass up. Corey how close were you to remaining a, a Bruin? Uh, not close. Could, could you ex expand on that a little um, with uh, you know with all respect uh, could, could you expand on that? Well, there was just uh, no communication, um, you know, nothing happened. So, um, you know, it's the, like I said before, once the opportunity presented itself to be a blue, um, you know, I had to, to take the chance and jump on it. Or was this even in your, uh, was this even in your head uh, or your, your agent's head uh, before today that the blues were a possibility? Not at all. Not at all. I mean, um, you know, we, we try to do our due diligence and, and look at the rosters and see what teams might need what on the left side there is specifically a, a power play guy that uh, can play both sides of the puck and, and be in every situation. Um, this was one of the teams that we just didn't, didn't know what was going to happen. And um, when it showed up, it, it was, we had to really take a better look at it and, and see what we could do here. And uh, we, we really liked the fit and obviously it all came together uh, quickly and, and we're very happy with how it worked out. Hey, Tori, have you reached um, out to Robert Thomas, or uh, have you heard from him? No, I haven't heard from him yet. I, I'm sure we'll have a, a conversation in the coming days and um, just go from there, I guess. I mean, probably uh, in hey, a lot Tori, of St. Louis, would, you're not remembered. Me, Mike Loftus. Um, could you um, – uh, there were reports that you got an offer from well, You're breaking up there, Mike. What would you say? Uh, hey, I'll – if, if he's breaking up, I'll jump in. Uh, there were reports that you got an offer from the Bruins. Is that true? Uh, yeah, about a year ago. Oh, wow. Not so. Yeah. Were you, uh, anything during that Stanley Cup final series that you remember that sticks out where now you look at that as uh, excitement in terms of being part of this team? Yeah, I mean, I think the the wave after wave that that, that team brings, um, every line when they jump over the boards, they, they know what their job is to do. And I think when when you're playing against that, it, it's almost like uh, it's tiring. And you're like, holy crap, this line's coming over the boards and i got to play against this. And then the next shift, it's a different line. And, and just the DNA and guys understand their roles and uh, they're relentless and they play with grit. And, and I think that's what's really exciting to me. Um, a very deep team uh, committed to the team and, and they play in your face style. And, and I'm excited to, to join in that. Tori, for people who, who don't know your, about your style of hockey, how would you best describe your game? Uh, well, I would hope that they would know my style by now, but um, no, just a, a dynamic defenseman that uh, I think my strengths are, are breaking the puck out and getting through the neutral zone and, and putting the puck in, um, the forwards hands you know those guys get paid to score goals and I get paid to pass the puck and, and get them in positions to score goals and and then obviously on the power play I think uh, it's no secret it's a, it's a strength of mine and uh, I enjoy doing it I have fun and I take a lot of pride in, in making sure that our, our team uh, can feed off the energy of a power play if we're not scoring a goal we're gaining momentum and and I really enjoy um, playing a big role in that so um, that's kind of what I bring to the table. Tori, you'll, you'll probably be paired with either uh, Colton Pareko or, or Justin Falk. Just, uh, what do you know about their games, and have you had any contact with them uh, since uh, this deal came together with the Blues? 
Uh, I've, I had a exchange messages with Falker. Um, I actually was his D partner in world championships a few years back. And uh, so we have some familiar, familiarity there um, with each other. Um, uh, Perry Aiko, I don't know him personally, um, but I understand, you know, I playing against these guys for so long now, uh, just a bigger body that skates really well. And that kind of lines up with what my pairing was in Boston. You know, I think the world of Brandon Carlo, and he's a, a bigger body that um, takes up a lot of space on the ice and the ends plays quickly. And, um, you know, I enjoy playing with a guy like that, but uh, we'll see what happens here. Um, I had success with Falker playing worlds um, years back and I know him well. We have uh, a lot of friends in common, so we get along very well. The chemistry's there, and we'll just see what happens here in the future. Corey, were you aware at all of what was uh, going on with uh, the Blues and Alex Petrangelo, and did you feel any sort of urgency to get something done in case those two sides circle back with each other? Uh, I wasn't aware, no. Um, you know, for from my own perspective, uh, this is a trying time for myself and my family, so um, – you know, I had to think of us and, and take care of us. And um, like I said, when, when the opportunity presented itself, uh, I had to do what was best for our family. And uh, I moved on it when I, I had the chance. There wasn't a rush or a sense of urgency, um, just an excitement. And, and overall, I, I knew where I wanted to be. So uh, I'm very excited that it, it worked out this way. Tori, you mentioned that you and Justin were defense partners. Were you guys on the power play together on the world championships? And how did that go if you were? Uh, to be honest, I, I don't recall the power play too much. Um, I think when I think about it now, we were, we were fixated on uh, Jack Eichel a little bit. I do remember being on the five on three with him. Um, so I think we were out there together. Uh, I think at one point it was me, him, and Seth Jones and two forwards uh, on a five on three, which I thought was a, a unique setup. But um, yeah, just some, some good memories. And like I said before, I know I get along with him really well. So. Uh, that should be a, a good transition. Tori, Tori, when you when you got up today, um, had you are were you already out of Boston? Uh, no, not at I all. Mean in, in your mind, yeah. No, no, not in my mind. I mean, um, I didn't know what today was going to bring, and and I was going to welcome anything that that came through the door. I guess rang through the phone, and um, it didn't work out. Um, you know, I was looking forward to having conversations with them. It just didn't happen, and. Um, but I, I'm very lucky and I feel um, like an opportunity to join the Blues was um, just just lucky and, and very uh, happy that it worked out. Um, very excited to join this group. Tori, once you got going with the Blues, obviously several teams called a, caliber, a player of your caliber. Was there anybody else in the mix? Uh, I just don't really want to talk about that, to be honest. You know, once I, I got the opportunity to – uh, and, and had that conversation with Doug, I, I knew that it was a, a great situation and, and looking at their roster, I just couldn't pass it up. So, um, yeah, it, it was once that phone rang and, um, I just had, uh, the tunnel vision. Hey, Tori, can you put into words, I suppose it'd be your hunger to win a Stanley cup coming so close two years ago and obviously being in the mix this past year, you've accomplished so much in your career, but this opportunity, well, it's a great opportunity. You know, I've, I've come very close uh, two times now. Even in uh, 2013, the way we lost game six was, was heartbreaking. And then to mm -hmm. lose a game seven in your own building, um, you know, it's like I said, you know, heartbreaking is the only word I can, um, can use here. So for me, it's uh, a very important part of the, uh, the vetting process when I was looking at teams and trying to figure out who had an opportunity to win. And um, this is one of them. So uh, year in, year out, I think you're going to you're gonna see a group that can compete, and, and that's what I'm looking forward to. And I don't know if you know Ryan O'Reilly personally, but um, just what, you, what do you know about him as a hockey player and as a leader? Well, I think just his commitment to a two-way game. And, um, you know, I mentioned before Patrice Bergeron. I, I don't think there's a guy in the world, I think, uh, higher than Patrice. But the way that they play uh, the game, they're just committed to both sides of the puck and um, – you know, for to have a guy, your leader, uh, be a guy that's committed, you know, 200 feet uh, day in, day out. He shows up from what I've heard, shows up to practice, leads the way. He's out on the ice after practice doing extra drills. Uh, we've all seen it on social media. Um, to have that guy, that energy just feeds through a room, and, and that's what a, a good team needs.
Corey, can you? Corey, are, are you in? Are you physically in Boston right now? Where are oh, yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, I'm in Boston. Um, any thoughts on, even though it's not a direct thing, that you're kind of being the guy that replaces Alex Petrangelo? Is there a challenge in that? Uh, I would, you know, I don't think uh, anyone here is expecting me from, rather, especially from the Blues standpoint, uh, to replace an Alex Petrangelo. Um, I think the world of him as a player, and I don't know him personally, but, um, you know, I, I just think we're different people, different players, and uh, I don't think anyone could really come in here and, and fill the uh, his shoes, but um, I'm excited about the opportunity that I have here. I think I can do things a little bit differently, and uh, I'm going to play to my strengths. I'm not going to worry about what people think about that. Um, there's a reason that uh, the Blues wanted me, and, and there's a reason I came here, and I'm just going to try to do my best to, to you know, fulfill my potential. Let's do two more, and I think, Kevin, you had your hand up, so go ahead. Corey, can you reflect on your time here? For, you know, you started here, you had your years, you had success. How hard is that to, to, to leave, and how hard is it that it was only a year, it was a year ago that they made that offer and it, it wasn't up to par. Just, just your feelings on all of that. Yeah, it's, you know, Kevin, it's very hard. Um, to be honest, I don't have all my, my thoughts and feelings, um, you know, ready to respond to a question like that. Uh, my initial response is that I'm just very excited to, to join the Blues and um, sad that I, I have to leave a city that gave me the opportunity. I mean, when I came into the league, there's not many teams in the league that would have taken a chance on a five foot nine defenseman, uh, a puck mover that was undrafted. And, um, you know, it's, it's tough. You know, I grew up here and uh, grew up as a professional and uh, my family's grown here. So it's, uh, it's emotional talking about it. Um, we'll see, you know, how I react in the, the coming days, but as of right now, I'm just really excited. Uh, great group of guys. Um, to move on from a city like this, uh, this locker room, I have lifelong friends that, you know, I'm going to remain in contact with and, and be very close with. So, you know, from that, that respect, uh, I'm just very thankful for my time in Boston and all the lessons I've learned over the years from that group of leaders and um, even the organization, uh, top to bottom, I, I have nothing but great things. Everybody good? Oh, go ahead. If I can follow up on that, if if you can just if you can just reflect on that money piece, they 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 don't often lose someone here for money. You know, they 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 kept uh, they kept uh, well everybody Berge, they kept uh, Marshy, all of that for it to come down to the dollar thing. Kev, yeah, I'm not going to comment on you know other guys' money situations and and things like that, but. Um... It was pulled from me. So I, you know, I didn't have a, an offer. And, and when they offer me a year ago and then it's gone, uh, I don't know what I'm expected to do. So um, just being blunt and being honest with you, you know, most people don't share that side of it, but it is what it is. And um, I'm very thankful that uh, for the opportunity they gave me and then very thankful for the opportunities that the Blues gave me. And I can't wait to to join this organization and be able to compete for a championship year in, year out. The, the core here is great. And I'm um, just looking very, you know, I'm looking forward to it. 